Hi everyone. When I first started tumbling rocks, I wondered why you couldn't use sand as tumbling grit instead of silicon carbide. After all, this cost me $5 for 50 pounds, and this was $83 for 45 pounds. Plus you gotta pay shipping on this. For this I can just run down to Home Depot and pick it up. Uh, so I thought we'd uh, try some experiments and see if we could figure out if this is a better option, save a lot of money. You might be wondering why I bought sand when you can just go out in the ground and pick it up. Uh, I bought it because, well, two reasons. First off, it's winter, so there's snow on the ground. And secondly, I wanted a more standardized sand. Uh, sand varies a little bit. There's some that's kind of powdery and some that's more coarse. This is Quickrete brand, so you know exactly what I'm using. So here's what I'm doing. I've got three barrels filled with desert jasper. I have the same number of rocks in each barrel, and each barrel weighs the same to the nearest gram. I've already put a cup of water in each of these, and I'm going to add a cup of water to this one. And then this is just going to be just like this, water and rocks, nothing else. This one I'm going to put in three tablespoons of sand. So one, two, three. And then this one I've got 4670 silicon carbide grit, which is what I would normally use in the first stage. This is also a tablespoon, so I'm doing three of these. And I'll put these on a tumbler for a week, and we'll take them off and see how they're looking at that time. Well, these have been running for a week now, so let's take a look. This is the one with just water and rocks. Uh, the slurry looks pretty watery. It is a, a brownish color, so something happened in there. Maybe just wash the rocks, I don't know. This is the sand and water and rocks. Lighter colored slurry. Uh, I'd say they look equally watery. And then this is the one with the 4670 grit in it. And this one's lighter yet. It's kind of a, a grayish color. Eh, maybe there's just a little bit of a slick on the top. Maybe it's not a lot different colored. Uh, I do notice this one, the rocks look like they're higher up in the barrel. And this one looks like the rocks have settled down a little bit more. I don't know if you can tell that, but I'm thinking these might have gotten ground down more and so they're settled in a little bit. So I'm going to go rinse these off and we'll weigh them and take a look at the rocks themselves a little more closely and see if we can notice any differences. I've got everything rinsed and dried off and I think the result's pretty interesting. The plain old water and the sand came out exactly the same. They both lost 8 grams or 1.3% of their initial weight. And the stuff that was done in silicon carbide lost 47 grams or 7.4% of its initial weight. So this is significantly more ground down. Uh, looking at them up close, here's a rock that hasn't been tumbled at all. So they start out with very sharp corners on them, like this one. And those corners have been worn off some by just plain old water. Uh, but what's interesting about the ones that were just done in water is it's got a little bit of a shine to it. It's like it polished. There was no polish in there, but just rubbing up against each other, they polished a little bit. I think you can see that there. Uh, these look pretty much the same. Uh, they're still pretty sharp, but not as sharp as the, the untumbled rocks. And then if you look at these, these are much more ground down. And, and neither of these have a shine on them either. Uh, these are the most dull but uh, it looks a lot different than it did before. If you just look at these two piles, I think you can see a big difference in them. So another factor here besides just polishing down or grinding down is that there's little chips left over. So when I rinse these off, I rinse them through a, a wire mesh screen and uh, there's little pieces from that. There's a lot more pieces that broke off from the ones done in the sand. And uh, ones in the silicon carbide are kind of similar. So that was not weighed. I didn't weigh those when I, when I weighed this up to see how much they lost. I didn't include these little pieces because those are broken off. So when you've got a fresh piece of rock, more of this stuff's going to break off in the first week than in following weeks just because it's sharper. So what I'm going to do is run these for another week and I shouldn't have as much of this stuff left over after another week. I don't think. We'll find out. Uh, and so that way we can get a little more fair assessment of how much is grinding and how much just fell off due to chips coming off. So I'm going to put these in for another week just like I did before. Same amount of grit. Uh, everything's going to be the same. The little pieces won't be included. 
it'll just be the, the bigger rocks. So I'll see you again in another week. The ones were just done in water. These were tumbled with sand. And these were tumbled in silicon carbide. After another week of tumbling, we got some really interesting results. Check out these rocks that were just tumbled in water. There was nothing else except water and rocks in the barrel, and they are getting shinier this week than they were last week. They already had a little shine on them, but look at that. So one of the steps in rock tumbling that's often suggested is called burnishing. And burnishing is where you take the rocks after they're all done tumbling, you put them back in the barrel with water and either borax or ivory soap shavings. And then you run them for, I don't even know how long, a couple of days maybe is what's recommended. I, I don't usually do it, so I don't really know. Uh, and I've always kind of, I don't know, written it off as something that doesn't really work because I've tried it a bunch of times and I've never seen my rocks get any shinier. The thing is, with the Lotto Tumbler, they come out so shiny in the first place. Oh, look at that one. They come out so shiny from the Lotto Tumbler that there's not much shinier than they, they can get. So, for me, burnishing hasn't really done anything. But I can now see if your rocks are coming out and they're kind of dull. Well, <laughs> these got really shiny, uh, even though they started out as completely rough, broken rocks. So I have a new appreciation for burnishing. Um, if your rocks aren't coming out super good, um, give, it a sh give it a shot. See what happens. These were done in the sand. And they are not shiny. They've got a little bit of a gloss to them, but not much. And uh, they're also not worn down very much. You can still see they have pretty sharp edges on them, as do these. Uh, so not much is happening here with the sand. And then over here, the ones that were done in silicon carbide, they are much more rounded. Uh, these sharp edges are still somewhat sharp, but they're rounding off more than the other ones did. So I, I just, I'm just looking at the whole pile, you can see that these are more rounded and the pile's even smaller than these are. So we still lost some little uh, little chips off them. These are the ones that were done in the water. These were tumbled in sand. These had the most chips by far. I don't really know why, but there was more that came off of there. And these were done in the silicon carbide. So whether fewer chips came off or if the chips just got ground down by the silicon carbide, I don't know, but this is what was left. So since last week, Here's what we got. Um, this one lost 13 grams. Uh, this was just since last week. I didn't go all the way back to the beginning. Um, 13 grams is about 2% of the 2.1% of the weight from last week. The ones that were done in sand lost only 6 grams or 1%. And the ones that were done in silicon carbide lost 51 grams or 8.6%. So why is silicon carbide so much better? Uh, well, these rocks are a 7 on the Mohs scale of mineral hardness. And 7 is pretty hard rock. That's what a lot of your, your jaspers and quartzes and uh, agates are going to be. And silicon carbide is 9, or it's over 9 on the Mohs scale. So you've got a much harder abrasive in here that's going to grind this way better. Besides that, silicon carbide is very sharp. It's just designed to grind stuff down. Uh, the ones that were done in sand, um, you've got sand that's mostly quartz. Uh, it's going to vary, uh, but the sand that I'm using I think is mostly quartz, and quartz is also a 7 on the Mohs scale. So you've got an abrasive that's the same hardness as the rocks, it's not going to do much good. Uh, the, the sand probably got ground down to nothing by the rocks pretty quickly in the process here. Uh, so if you're trying to save money, uh, you can save money by doing them just in plain water and get a pretty good uh, shine by the looks of it, at least on these rocks. Uh, but if you're trying to get something rounded, it's going to take forever to round them in sand. Uh, silicon carbide is going to do the job a little bit quicker, a lot quicker. And it's also going to save you some electricity. Rock tumblers don't use a whole lot of electricity. Uh, 
but you are going to use a lot more if you've got to run these for seven or eight times longer than these do. Uh, plus you're going to get really tired waiting. So I'd say go ahead and spend the extra money, get yourself some silicon carbide, and grind a little faster. I did another video looking at the amount of electricity that rock tumblers use, so if you'd like to check out that video, there's a link here, and there's a link to a playlist of videos about rock tumbling you might enjoy too. So I'll see you over one of those videos.